Hallelujah. Well, let's pray tonight as we get into the word here for a little bit. We just worship you, Father, and thank you tonight for what you're doing in our lives. And as we just come before your throne, granted access by the powerful name above every name, the name of Jesus. Lord, I just thank you for stirring up the gifts of God inside of us here tonight. Lord, as you've been stirring people in worship with prophetic words of edification, exhortation, comfort, admonition, Lord, you've been challenging your people to step up and step out, and your people are heeding and listening. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for doing such a marvelous work inside of the people of God. And Lord, now we pray as we open these scriptures and share these truths tonight that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened and we'll know the hope of our calling. We'll know what are the riches of your glory and the inheritance of the saints. What's the exceeding greatness of your power? toward us who believe, which you've already demonstrated when you worked that great power in Christ, when you raised him from the dead, set him at your own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality, power, might, dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the one which is to come. And we do pray, Father, that you would Strengthen us by your spirit in our inner man as Christ dwells in our heart by faith. Lord, that we would be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and breadth and depth and height. To know the fullness of God that passes knowledge. That we might be filled with all the fullness of God. Because you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above everything we ask or think. And you do it according to the power that is already working in us. And we thank you for that baptism of fire. That baptism of power that you put inside of us to change us from the inside out. And so we pray tonight, Father, your kingdom would continually come and your will would be done in our lives on earth here tonight, just as it is in heaven. We thank you for that. We thank you for that. Holy Spirit, speak clearly through me tonight. I ask and I pray that you open the ears of every person to hear what you are saying unto the church and under the churches. We pray this in Jesus' name. If you're in agreement, shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Well, if you have your Bibles tonight, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 14. We've been talking about prevailing prayer. And uh, tonight I want to just kind of stir you up a little bit about praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. And so as we look into these scriptures tonight, we're going to be talking about Praying in other tongues, praying in the Spirit, I believe is praying in other tongues. I believe you can pray in the Spirit in your original language as long as the Spirit is actually directing your prayers and it's not just coming from your intellect, okay? So do you have to pray in tongues to pray in the Spirit? I don't believe so. But you'll find that you probably will pray in the Spirit a lot, praying in tongues. Because you're praying the will of God when you pray in the Spirit. You're being directed by the Holy Spirit, working through your recreated spirit. You know, I'd say praying in tongues, speaking in tongues is one of the most controversial topics in doctrine in the church today. It can be very divisive if you allow it to be. It can be very divisive. Um, I try to carry a, I guess you'd say the way I like to approach this is I personally, from my study of the scriptures and from my experience in life, believe that every born-again believer can 
pray in tongues, but I don't believe all do. Now, I also believe that there's a gift separate from praying in tongues, which was demonstrated in the early part of the service with a tongue message that was to be interpreted. And when that tongue message is interpreted, the scripture says it's equal to prophecy. So in other words, we're speaking what God wants to say. So whether God, so why does God use a tongue in a service? We're gonna get into that. And it's very obvious in the scriptures why he does that. When the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus, he began a supernatural side of ministry. And that same supernatural side of ministry wants to operate in us. The Holy Spirit brought gifts into us. And you got to remember something. The Holy Spirit manifests his supernatural abilities. And the Bible categorizes them into nine things. We call them the gifts of the Spirit. And there's also nine fruits of the Spirit. God chose nine. Why? I don't know. But he inspired the writers of the New Testament to say this. And so when we look at how these gifts work, we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and we're going to start in verse 12. We don't have time to do the whole chapter tonight, but we're going to pick out a few things that will be in context. Paul says to the Corinthian church, even so you since you are zealous for spiritual gifts. Let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. And this is why, I wanna say this, this is why tongues, prophecy, and other gifts of the Spirit sometimes get a bad rap. Is because anything you can use, you can abuse, right? Anything that's normal can become abnormal. It's normal for the church to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's abnormal for those gifts to become destructive to people instead of edifying to people. You can speak in the name of the Lord and you can misrepresent the Lord You can add your personality to things and make it misrepresent his intent. You know, there's a classic old kind of joke in the church and there was a guy that got up and gave a prophecy one day in the church. And you know, in the older prophetic movement, everybody said, thus saith the Lord. That was how every prophecy started. Or my little children. If you were in the 80s, every seemed like every prophetic word said, if, especially if a woman was saying it, my little children, I would say unto you, you know, or thus saith the Lord. And so a guy got up and he said, thus saith the Lord, just as I instructed Moses to build a great ark, I'm instructing you to prepare your homes for a flood of dissipation coming on the earth. The guy sat down. And there was silence in the room. And he stood back up and he said, thus saith the Lord, I meant Noah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on. So how many of y'all even caught that? <laughs> oh my goodness. Noah built the ark. Moses got us the Ten Commandments, all right? <laughs> all right, we'll just get these two straightened out right now, all right? So I'm going to go, Right over your head. Amen. We're going to do a Bible study. I invite you to attend Charlie Rowan's Bible 101 next Monday night. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So anyway, um, I, I, I want to encourage you as we talk about these things. Again, we, I, I am allowed to covet. Did you know that? You know, the Bible gives me permission to covet. How about that? Well, I thought there's one of the, you know, let's go to the 10th commandment. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. 
well, I'm not coveting your house. I'm coveting the Holy Spirit gifts. And I'm allowed to covet the Holy Spirit gifts because he says covet to prophesy. In other words, I want it bad. Covet the best gifts. That's what he said, covet the best gifts, especially that you may prophesy. The scripture instructs us, desire spiritual gifts. So it's normal to have the desire and the want for the supernatural side of the ministry. Amen. Now, I don't understand, as a believer, the moment I discovered in 1982 that these things were even possible, it was, it was over. I was ruined, man, for any other. Once I discovered it was even possible because I was raised in a Christianity that was not even on the menu. In fact, we were told the restaurant doesn't make that anymore. Right? It didn't do any good to come in and say, uh, Father, I'd like to have some tongues tonight because the restaurant didn't cook that anymore. You know, I went in Cheddar's here about maybe, I don't know, nine months ago, and I sat down and I said, yeah, give me one of them half loaves of onion rings. How many of y'all ever ate at Cheddar's? And got that loaf of onion rings. It's right next to uh, Heavenly Experience. <laughs> and we're not going to talk about the calories or the grease or any of that. Just the flavor. And I sit down and they said, we don't make those anymore. And I said, then why am I here? <laughs> because everything else you make is average, but that thing was over the top, you know. That thing was, I mean, that thing would just put you into a carb coma. It was awesome, right? <laughs> that was a heart attack on a plate right there. And I said, you don't make them anymore. And she said, no, they took them off the menu. I said, why? She said, well, there was too much preparation time in it. I said, really? I said, well, you do realize that was your signature item. Just like, you know, if you go to Red Lobster, you get the cheddar biscuit, right? Come on, cheddar biscuit. You know what I'm talking about? You eat like 12 of them. <laughs> and, uh, you know... But she said, no, there's, we took them off the menu. And I'm like, wow, too much preparation. And I think it takes, for some churches, we took tongues off the menu because it requires too much faith. You know, we took prophecy off the menu because it requires too much government. It requires too much responsibility. And we're not even going to leave room for error. You know, we're not even going to leave room for error. We're not even going to, we're going to, we're going to make the service that is so man-made, nothing could ever go wrong. That would be like asking God to birth a child that could walk, talk, do everything, go get a job. Come home from the hospital, look at the kids, say, get up, go get a job. you take care of yourself. You know, to expect a Christian you know, we had a couple of people, probably might have been their first time tonight. How about you, Liz? Is that your first time? First time publicly getting, I'm giving for it. Luke, where are you at? Is that your first time? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, hallelujah. Yeah. Everybody say, God help me. My first time. Amen. And I tell you, I am so encouraged because that's the next generation taking that step of faith that I took when I'm standing there as, you know, a 20-something and, and my heart's pounding and I know I'm supposed to say something and I'm freaking out because I think if I say something wrong, I'm going to get stoned. The deacons are going to drag me out in the parking lot and beat me. <laughs> Pastor's going to disown me, kick me out of the church. And, you know, it, you got to recognize and realize something. We're a training center. Yeah. Amen. I still prophesy with training wheels on. Why? Because, you know, Pastor Brian always says it this way. He says, 
You know, I'm 50-50 on my prophetic accuracy. 50-50, he said, yeah, I'm either right or wrong. <laughs> you know, I've never, I think we found out during the election that a lot of prophets thought they were hearing things from God and found out. And I don't know about you, but that made me go back and question a lot of things. And it should, because the Bible says if you say something that the Lord is going to do something and it don't come to pass, it says don't fear that prophet, for he's prophesied from his own heart. So the gifts of the Spirit, when we start stirring them up, there's going to be cleanup. But everybody relax, we're going to back clean up. Amen. You know, on a baseball team, sometimes they have to put... Uh, good outfielders, but they're not real good at hitting. And so they'll usually save a real heavy hitter to back clean up. And what that means is you may strike out and you may only get in first base, but I'm going to take you home because there's somebody that's going to get up and knock it out the park. And they're the scoring guys, you know what I mean? But every person is going to develop and grow in these gifts. You know, I've given hundreds of words, hundreds and probably thousands of words. And I always go back and check them for accuracy because I want to know. I still don't, I have to judge myself in this. You know, if I'm giving someone a word, I want to know, does that bear witness with you? And if they say no, I say, okay, I might have missed it. Just put it on the shelf and let's see what happens. I've had some people tell me no and then come back later and say, guess what? That word you gave me that I didn't bear, it, 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 it was right on. So we don't know because we, see, and here's what the Bible says. We see in part and we prophesy in part. So everybody say, I got to do my part. I got to do my part. And we have some people that have a greater gifting in one area than another. You know, Pastor Brian has one of the strongest healing anointings I've been around. He has legitimate miracles everywhere he goes. And he'll be sometimes venting. He just left for Africa this morning. And he'll be over there for five weeks. And he was vent, sometimes he'll vent to me. He'll say, you know, I I shouldn't have to do all this. Everybody's supposed to be doing what I do, and I have to correct him. And I say, no, you have a gift, Brian. There is the normal believer's healing. That's normal. In other words, every believer can lay hands on the sick, and there's a good chance they'll recover. But then there are some people that have a gift of healing. Anyone can get up and give a word to a church, I have a gift of preaching. Anyone can sing, but Nicole has a gift to sing. I don't even compare my singing gift to hers. Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? You know, I mean, I can kick on JD's keyboard right now. Imagine if you would. (laughs) Imagine if you would. But I can play like chopsticks, you know? I can play, here we go, up a road to a birthday party. That's the first song I learned, I think. (laughs) Remember teaching little fingers to play? I can play a few of those, but I'm not a maestro on on a keyboard. You know, I can go up and bang around on drums, but I'm not a Nelson or a Garrett. You know what I'm saying? Or a Courtney. I ain't going to do that. We all have a gift. Now, I don't expect everyone who gets up and gives a prophetic word to be like a senior prophet, fourth member of the Godhead type prophet. (laughs) You know what I mean? But man, I love it when you get up and, and I always teach this. I call it prophesying with training wheels on, or I call it being like a circus performer. Keep a net under you. And that's why I always say, I believe I hear the Lord saying. 
Why? Because I'm leaving room for correction. And I'm not ever going to stand up and say I arrived. And we've seen some guys do that with the election. And uh, some of them still haven't come back and made that right. Some of them had to get up and say, I missed it. And I repent. And I was, you know, getting out ahead of myself. And I found that these gifts of the Spirit, we need to do them for the edifying of the church, including tongues. Now, I've been around Pentecostal churches since 1982. And we don't really call them so much Pentecostal churches as we call them Word of Faith, Charismatic Movement, Full Gospel Churches. Pentecostal churches were kind of what they were known as in the earlier 1900s up through the mid-1900s. And then it took on what they called the Charismatic Movement, Word of Faith, and so on and so forth. Full Gospel. But you know, a lot of abuse happened with the gifts that was never corrected that hurt people. So I'm so glad Paul put this chapter in our Bible. I'm glad he took time to address this. So he says, do what you do for the edification of the church. And for the church, let's do this for the church to excel, not to try to bring glory to ourselves. So he says, let him who speaks in a tongue Pray that he may interpret. Now, we typically will have two or three tongue messages a month in the congregation. And you'll get to see a pattern. And I've had people ask me, why does it always seem like the same people? It's everything I've set up to now. It's their gift. Not everyone in this room will have the gift to give a tongue message in a service. I don't believe that gift's for everybody. I believe that gift is given as the Holy Spirit wills to work in you for that gift. I completely differentiate praying in tongues from speaking in tongues, as does Paul. Because look what he says next year. Now, if I pray in a tongue, now notice before he says, if I speak in a tongue, I want to pray for an interpretation. But if I pray in a tongue, he used a different word. It's a different Greek word. So speaking is declaring or speaking forth. Praying is speaking unto God. I love all you, but I ain't praying to none of you. I like some of y'all, but I ain't praying to none of you. I'm praying to God, right? Are you with me? So when I'm praying, I'm speaking to God. So he says, when I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. When I first got baptized in the Holy Ghost, clear back in 1982, this portion of scripture just exploded inside me. My spirit prays. And I remember thinking back then, as I do now, I have a spirit. You have a spirit. If my spirit can pray, your spirit can pray. Now, I didn't say if you have the gift of tongues. I said if you have a spirit, you can pray in the spirit, which is praying in other tongues. I like to demystify it, if if you will, because many people have such a fear about tongues. A fear. And, you know, it's almost like when we grow up, most human beings have an an innate fear of snakes, right? Why? Because you've been taught they'll bite you, they're poisonous, they're of the devil. Well, some of us have the same thing about tongues because we were taught from children's church and dead denominational churches, that's of the devil. That's Pentecostal crazy holy rollers. That's not of God. I mean, I was taught growing up that if you spoke in tongues, you actually had a demon doing that to you. It was a counterfeit. It wasn't even real. We used to make fun of holy rollers when I was a kid. We called them holy rollers. Why? Because when when people would be slain in the spirit, 
what we call being slain the spirit. In other words, someone prays for you and you fall down. And then we, we've had all kinds of revival meetings and experiences where people literally, I've seen people on the floor, not necessarily just rolling, but doing some wild things. And it was of the Holy Ghost. It was of God. But people have this innate fear of tongues. This fear of tongues is what has stopped so many from ever being able to pray in the Spirit. Why? It's hard to release faith. You know, for example, let me just say this. Jesus gave this, this beautiful analogy in Luke 11. He said, if any of you who is a father, if your child asks you for bread, we offer him a stone. If he asks you for an egg, we offer him a scorpion. Of course not. Then Jesus said these words. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? I have used that verse with more people coming out of the Baptist denomination who were so afraid that if they ask God for a Holy Ghost and the gifts of the Holy Ghost, they were going to get a demon. Because that's how I was taught growing up. So I had to, de I had to come in and say, no, no, God would never give you, he said right there, I'm not going to give you something evil if you ask me for something good. And then they've all used the verse in 1 Corinthians 13, the same verse to completely wipe the gifts of the Spirit out of the church for generations. Whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. For when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away with. That's, they've used that verse. So I always went to, I have to take people back to that verse and say, okay, now what did that, let's read it again. Whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Now it literally means they shall be fulfilled. So I always ask people, are all prophecies fulfilled yet? Well, everyone will say no. Why? Jesus hasn't come back. The rapture hasn't happened. The Antichrist hasn't been raised up. We haven't been taken off the earth. The earth hasn't been destroyed. There's not a new heavens and a new earth yet. There are scores of prophecies that have not yet been fulfilled. So have prophecies failed? No. Have they all been fulfilled? No. So there's still prophecies working. Yeah. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. That's future. So I say, what has come since Paul wrote that? And they always say, we have the Bible. I said, Paul wrote the Bible. Paul didn't say, as soon as I'm done writing this chapter, Holy Ghost is going to stop. As soon as I finish this chapter, it's over, folks. Hang your tongues up. <laughs> Buy loafers. No more tongues in your shoes. You, you just throw all your tongues away. No, 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 no. That's not what Paul said. He said, when that which is perfect is coming, I always have to take people to that. And I say, now let me ask you, what has come? That's perfect. And I've had many, especially people coming from the Baptist denomination say the canonized Bible. And I said, that's not perfect because our translations are not perfect. So even if God's word which it is perfect when it comes from his lips. It's not always perfect. It's translated through three different languages. It's very accurate, and we can hang our hats on it. It's very powerful, but it's not perfect. That is not the perfect which is to come. Because that word perfect, it, 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 again, it has a completion factor when that which is fully matured to completion has come then that which is in part will vanish away. We're still in the part ministry. 
We're still doing parts of it. And so again, we have to go through this sometimes with folks and get the fear off of them. I have, I have pastored people for nearly 40 years and it's amazing to me. And, and there's people probably in this room tonight that can say with this testimony, yeah, I was one of them. It took me days, weeks, months, or even years to get filled with the Holy Spirit or to be able to pray in tongues. And here's another situation that can be divisive, but it doesn't need to be. People say, can you be filled with the Holy Spirit and not pray in tongues? And my answer is absolutely. Because there's a lot of people who will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but again, they're hung on tongues. And they're so fearful or so fretful or so much doubt and unbelief about this one specific gift, they'll reject that one gift, but they'll still operate in other gifts. So yes, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit without praying in tongues. But my question is, why? That's like saying, can you go over here and buy a nice, uh, let's just get you a nice Mercedes uh, 450 uh, SUV, and let's get every bell and whistle on it. I mean, this thing will do everything but brush your teeth. <laughs> and you get in it, and it's a little warm. And instead of hitting the power window, you open the door, and they're going, you're driving down the road with your door open, and, and somebody says, what are you doing? They say, well, I'm a little warm. It's a little warm in here. Well, well why don't you roll down the window? Well, I don't believe in that. Well, it's in the car. Yeah, but why don't you turn on the air conditioner? Well, I don't believe in that. So I'm going to drive down the street with my door open. <laughs> and that's a stupid illustration, but it's about how stupid it is to say, I want all your gifts, Holy Spirit, except tongues. I want you, Holy Spirit, but when you come into me, I'd like you to take tongues I don't like tongues. Casting out devils? Mm -mm, no, not for me. And put that in a suitcase and just leave that out here. He comes with the whole thing, folks. You can't divide him in that sense. And he's the one who distributes the gifts. If we go back up to 1 Corinthians 12, it tells us he distributes the gifts as he wills. So one person will work in a stronger gift of faith, one person will work in a stronger gift of healing, one person will work in speaking in different tongues and interpretation, one person will prophesy, one person will, will lay hands on the sick, one person will have words of knowledge and words of wisdom. These are all gifts that the Holy Spirit decides which ones you get. And, and I'm going to stand on the word. And I, I even have friends that will stand up and say, no, the, every believer can do everything. And I'm like, that's not what the Bible says. That, you can say that, but it ain't what, you ain't got word to back it up. So again, I'm not going to make tongues such a divisive factor in the church that if you don't speak in tongues, you can't be at home in this church. I'm not going to do that. I'll tell you what I will do. I'll say, if you ever want to really believe for that, we'll believe with you until it manifests. And I believe it will manifest praying in tongues. Don't know if you'll ever get the gift to give a tongue message in church. I don't know if that's in your package or not. Holy Spirit may not want you to do that. He may want you to speak in English and prophesy instead of giving a tongue and then a prophetic word to interpret it. Holy Spirit may want you to work in the gift of healing. Holy Spirit may want you to work in the gift of healing. He may, he may not ever have you give a tongue message and interpretation in the church, but he may have you say, man, I just, I got a word inside me, a word of knowledge. Somebody in here is having chest pains. Who is that? God wants to heal you. That's a completely different gift. But we got to stir up all the gifts. Amen? Now, when it comes to prayer, again, Paul specifically teaches us that we should pray in the Spirit primarily alone. 
not corporately. I get, I, I have many, many pastor friends and ministry friends, and they completely disregard this. And in services, even when they're preaching here, they'll start praying in tongues loud. Everybody pray in tongues now. And I'm like, Bible says not to. I mean, if you want to really get down to the word, let's just keep reading. So he says, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing in the spirit. Sometimes you'll hear some of our singers and, and they may start singing a little bit in the spirit. Now, I encourage them to drop the mic when you do that. Why? Unless you're gonna sing the interpretation. You're not edifying the body. So why are you doing it? Well, I felt like it. Well, you know, sometimes I feel like slapping folks, but I don't do that in church. <laughs> I felt like it. Holy Ghost was all over me. Just get it. The spirit of slap came on me, man. Pow. <laughs> and listen, I was trained differently than I'm teaching tonight in my own home church. My pastor will get up to this day, you know, he's 85 years old, and if he's up in this pulpit, he'll, and I'm sitting there going, the Bible says not to do that. But I'm not going to make it divisive. I'm not going to stand up and say, in the name of Jesus, stop. Why? I'm just trying to help the church stay decent and in order. And so was the apostle Paul. I'm not making a law here to where we're going to have Holy Ghost tongue cops. They're going to write you a ticket. I mean, Usher walks up to you, he's got a pad in his hand. You got, you got a little caught up in worship and just started kind of praying in tongues. And Usher comes up, hands you a $120 ticket. You were tongue speeding. You cross the double yellow line. Reckless operation of the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. They may even come up and give you a DUI. Driving while intoxicated in the Holy Ghost. So I'm trying to teach decent and order, but I, I want you to carry the spirit of this and not the letter. Again, I'm not going to fall out of my chair if a guest speaker goes up and says, oh, everybody, let's just pray in tongues right now. I'm just going to, I'm going to go with the flow, and then I'll come back later and say, you know, guys, it, we didn't break nothing unless, unless there was an unbeliever who was confused without any explanation. And so that's why we bring up the scripture as soon as, as soon as usually a tongue message, the folks running the projector, they throw up and says, okay, here's what we're about to do. Bible says, if you speak in a tongue, now let's interpret and we'll hold the service. And if there's no interpretation and we're either going to, I'll come up and interpret it possibly, or we'll say, okay, that must've been just you praying in tongues and not really a tongue message from the church for the church. Guess what? That's all right, we'll try it again next time. You didn't break nothing. God didn't fall off his throne because you spoke in tongues. In fact, I would just say this. I can typically discern a tongue, whether it is a believer who got a little ecstatic in worship and prayed in tongues loud, or whether it's an actual message to be interpreted. But I typically don't stop the service and correct that. Why? Again, we're not trying to become the tongue police here. But if stuff starts getting a little too out of hand to where people are getting hurt and confused and wounded, then we're going to police it. We're going to come back and say, you know, in other words, you do it one time and, and you get up and uh, myself or Dennis might come to you a little later and say, hey, you know what? I think when you gave that tongue, you were just praying in tongues, weren't you? I don't know. Well, you were. Now, it's okay because someone had a prophetic word. 
It might not have actually been the interpretation of that tongue because it didn't match. You know what I mean? How many of y'all ever watch, or I've preached with interpreters around the world, you know, and a good interpreter does what I do. A bad interpreter, we call him an interrupter. You know, he was a bad interrupter. But a good interpreter, man, if I go, and the Lord said, then the interpreter will go, la, 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 la. He'll mimic me. Why? That's how you interpret. Interpret comes with emotion. It comes with voice inflection. It comes with body language. If you're going to interpret something, you have to interpret it. So I always tell people, if you're going to interpret a tongue, let's try to match the tongue that was given. And tonight was a pretty good job. Tonight was a pretty good job. I believe that was a tongue to be interpreted, by the way, tonight. And I believe the interpretation was good. Amen. You know, I would never expect a third grader to turn in an English paper at a college level. Would you? C spot run. Jane and Dick climbed a tree. Jane fell down and broke his knee. I mean, broke her knee. <laughs> A little transgenderism there, you know. I mean, come on. <laughs> See, they even got me confused now. <laughs> Schools. I've been, lot, <laughs> been hearing too much about this war with DeSantos and Florida and the school and all that. Anyway, so again, I'm going to try to follow the scripture and keep it as close as we can to being defendable. Because I'm going to tell you something. A lot of times people say, well, I think that's dumb. I don't think it's, I think it's, you, there ain't no reason you shouldn't be able to just pray in tongues whenever you want to in the service. And, and I say, yeah, but you're not in my office Monday morning when I get the phone call from the visiting Baptist or the visiting Presbyterian or the visiting person that says, why do you do what the Bible says not to do? How do I defend that? I can't. I can't defend it. It's indefensible. So he goes on to say, I'll sing with the Spirit and I'll sing with the understanding. Otherwise, if you bless with the Spirit, again, how do you know in the Spirit with the Spirit is tongues? Because he, what, look what he says here. If I bless with the Spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks since he doesn't understand what you say? Why? Because you were blessing in tongues. If I bless in the spirit, I'm blessing with tongues. So everybody say, I've got to remember because we have public services, there will probably be an uninformed person among us. And I need to love God enough to protect that person from confusion until adequate explanation can be given. Now, what about the person that says, well, I don't believe in tongues and I won't come to this church if you guys pray in tongues. See ya. We got another problem there. Because if you reject this truth... I'm going to say, you know what? There's probably a hundred churches within five miles that you'll feel totally at home at because you'll never hear tongues in that church. But you also won't hear any prophecy and no one will cast out a devil and they won't be laying hands on the sick and anointing with oil. And it'll probably be a long funeral service because that's what most churches are. It's like a 30-year funeral. Each week, well, brother so-and-so died, brother says, until there's no one left. They can start shutting the nursery down after about five years. You know, well, we shut the nursery down. I actually have had pastors tell me, well, we shut our nursery down. I said, why? There's no babies. I said, what do you mean there's no babies? The first fire alarm I would ever have in this church is when they tell me there's no babies in them cribs back here. That would be a fire alarm. That would be telling my church is on the wrong fire. Amen? So, he goes on to say, 
for you indeed give thanks well. Again, hey, nothing wrong with what you're doing. You, you bless with the tongues all you want. Pray, I pray in tongues. I prayed in tongues probably an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes today. And not one of you heard me. But God heard me because my tongues aren't for you anyway. They're for God. The only, way I'm gonna, the only reason I would ever pray in tongues for you is if I'm going to interpret. Amen? Why? Well, what good's it going to do for you to, for me to pray in tongues over you? You don't know what I'm saying. So it ain't going to help you. And that's what Paul's just trying to get the church to see. So he says, yet in the church, I would rather speak five words. Well, wait a minute. I, I got to hit on myself. For you indeed give thanks well, but the other is not edified. Everybody say, I came here, came here. To, serve to serve the body of Christ. Not to just get my tongues on. <laughs> hmm? Come on. Like I said, and, and Paul says this. Look what he says. He says, I thank God I speak in tongues more than y'all. And I can probably say that for most people in this church. I speak in tongues more than most people in this church. And I pray, I wish everyone spoke in this church tongues more than I did in this church. I'd love you to see, pray more than I do in this church. I'd love to see that. Amen, I'd love that. But he said this, yet in the church, everybody say in the church, in the church. I, would I would rather speak, speak. Five, words five words with my understanding. Why? That I may teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. You know, I was uh, invited to a revival one time over in Ohio, and I don't even remember what town. It's some little tiny town in Ohio. And I didn't know anybody. I'd been invited to the revival. I knew it was a Pentecostal church is all I knew. And I went, a couple of people from our church went, and we went in there. There's probably 50 people. It was a real small sanctuary. They had folding chairs. And uh, <laughs> I had never been to something like this. So they started some music, you know, and all of a sudden, and I mean, it, this woman went off for five minutes in tongues. And everybody just kind of looked at her. And then the music went on. And I'm sitting there thinking, y'all going to interpret that? <laughs> What about these? And then this woman starts, there was a thing that, there was a move of God that came through Kentucky. It was legitimate, guys. You can read about it in history. But she started jerking. And I, I am not exaggerating. People moved all around her. She knocked down five chairs jerking. True story. And I'm just sitting there going, okay. And not one word was said to anybody. When the music was over, they picked up the chairs and everybody sat down. <laughs> not one explanation was given. Nothing. But that happened a lot in early Pentecostal churches in the Appalachians. And so a lot of people got this idea we're crazy. And Paul kind of warned that would happen if we didn't administrate the gifts of the Spirit, if we didn't govern in the house of God. You know, I mean, it'd been great. The pastor got up and said, Sister Mary, you got a little excited there. Sister, just kind of keep that to yourself a little bit. We're in the middle of a meeting here. Love your zeal, but don't forget what the scriptures say, you know. And, and it, I actually, I kind of think, and I'm not going to say, thus saith the Lord, but I just wonder if that, some of that wasn't even a religious spirit putting on a show, and it might have been more of a come out moment, come out of her, 
Because when you start knocking chairs over and stuff, now I'm going to just question this, you know? Now, wait a minute. Is this God or not? And I'm not saying because, like I say, I have read the revival history. I've been reading it for 40 years, man. There was a move of God called the Jerks. It was in Kentucky. It was in the Brush Arbor meetings. It was legitimate. Tens of thousands of people were born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. But one of the manifestations was they would jerk under the anointing. And I have seen the jerks happening in services where it, I would judge it. Yeah, that's God. And some people will just, just have a jerk. With well, that jerks, that thing got so strong, hecklers would come in. And they'd fall down as dead when they started heckling. One heckler came in one night drunk, and they said it looked like some supernatural force nailed his feet to the ground. They said his body went fully back and forth, back and forth, snapped his neck, and he was killed instantly. He said it looked like God just shook him like a rag doll and snapped his neck, and he died. He came in to heckle that. That's true stories that happened in Kentucky in the brush. So again, I'm not against unusual manifestations of the spirit, but we will kind of check out the person because we've also found that there's some folks that just like to get attention. And the church is kind of like a place where you can go and do your thing and no one will do anything about it. But that's not this church. (laughs) Amen? So again, we're wanting to do things for the, the betterment of the church. So as your pastor, I'm going to encourage you, seek after tongues. Pray and ask the Holy Ghost. Get other brothers and sisters to pray with you. We want you to pray in tongues, man. Why? I pray in tongues more than y'all, man. It's the greatest thing in the world for me. I also can be used in the gift of tongues and interpretation. That's one of the gifts the Holy Spirit lets me work in. I typically don't because I want you to do it. I mean, half the tongues that are given, I can walk up here and interpret it. But I don't. Why? I want you to do it. That's the body ministry. It ain't Dave does it all show, you know. It's just like, you know, there isn't a song sang up here that Nicole couldn't sing it better. Come on. That's just the reality of the gifts. But man, she's, you watch her. She's like a mother hen up here and her little chicks and they start, she, you go, you go. She just fanning the flame, man. Go, go. All that is so good, you know? Amen. You see what I'm saying? So again, we, we, we look at this and we keep these things in context. Now, we'll, we'll close up with Jude tonight. Jude 17 as one of the most beautiful scriptures about the power of praying in the spirit or praying in other tongues. Jude 17 says, but you beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the spirit. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you something. When you begin, when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit and you begin to consistently pray in other tongues in your prayer time with God, I'm telling you, your growth is going to accelerate to light speed with God. There is no question about this. There is no, I'm not saying I think that will happen. I know that will happen because it always happens to people who take it serious and who exercise this gift. Why? Because you will build up yourselves on your most holy faith Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. And you know, whether we have, again, 
And I, I got to just reiterate this. We're going to have a, a conference this July. And I guarantee you at least one speaker, maybe several, are going to say, everybody just pray in tongues, especially if it's Kevin, right? Everybody, pray in tongues. He'll, he'll bring the youth up here and he'll make them pray in tongues. And some of us say, there ain't no interpretation of that. It's a different kind of meeting. It's a different kind of meeting. And I'm not against that. I wish we would have more explanation with it. Why? Because I know he, what Kevin's doing, he's trying to get these kids who live carnal most of the time to shift over in the spirit because he knows what's going to happen in their lives when they begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. He knows they're going and watch them up here, folks. You talk, it's like transformers. <laughs> little meek, mild, little Johnny comes up. Kevin says, I can't hear you. No, 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 no. I can't hear you. Is that all you got? Oh, no, no, no. And the kid, wow. And then they're on fire for God for a month. Or a week. Or a day or a night. And if they would keep praying in tongues, they'd stay on fire for God. They'd stay on fire for God. And I am an advocate for every believer to pray in the Holy Spirit. I am. I'm an advocate for it. And again, I'll never say every believer will have the gift of tongues. That's a different operation. You know, there's another operation of the gift of tongues. And that is speaking a known language that you didn't learn. Now, I've only had that happen to me, what I would say, legitimately that I know of. It's probably happened a hundred times, but I knew of one time because I was in Pastor Bob's church and I was in a prayer room and it was in a hallway and there was a door and I'd been in there praying in tongues before the service. And when I opened the door, a lady was standing in the hallway and she said, your Latin is beautiful. When did you learn to speak Latin? And I looked at her and I said, what? She said, your Latin is beautiful. You were praying in Latin. And I said, lady, I don't know a word of Latin. She looked at me and she said, well, you were praying in perfect Latin. I have no idea. I was praying in tongues. I've heard of this happening, especially overseas in mission situations. That's another gift of tongues that you may never experience in your life. And I only have once that I know of that that lady said. And again, I don't know Latin, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I know I was speaking Latin. Well, I didn't know the Latin, but she said I was. I had another situation, a guy, he, he, uh, he, was in a, he had been backslidden for years. He came into a church. A lady got up and gave a tongue, and nobody interpreted the tongue. And so the pastor literally said, well, that must have you know, not been in order because nobody interpreted it. The guy that had been backslidden, and I know the guy personally, he said he spoke fluent German, and she got up and told him in perfect German that he had been called back to the house of God and that God was giving him a second chance and that if he would turn his heart over today that God would renew his life. And that guy ended up being a worship leader in a 2,000-member church went from a bar because a woman got up and spoke in tongues and there was no interpreter. And most people said that was out of order. Well, you never know. Again, that's why we're not going to have police here. We're not going to get upset. We may have to calm someone down once in a while. But again, let's do, and then Paul finished all this by saying, let all things be done decently and in order. And I love how he closes the chapter. And forbid not to speak in tongues. Amen? So I like to say, man, I'm a, I'm a prayer guy. I am so thrilled at the prayer warriors that have wrote, risen up in this church. I'm so thrilled with the spirit of prayer that's been in this church this year and in the last year. I'm so thrilled. I mean, I am thrilled. When I come in here in the mornings and there's a half a dozen people walking around here praying, I'm like, yeah. This is, this is Christianity right here. This is a real deal. 
You know, when I know you're home in your closet and you're getting up sometimes in the middle of the night and you're interceding and you're believing God something to be birthed in the spirit, man, that's real. And that's God. And we want to encourage you to prevail in those prayers. Amen? Prevail in those prayers. So how are we going to, how are we going to, react when something happens well we have to decide are we going to become divisive combative no but we will correct things if they need corrected amen amen I've had people get up and say something you know and I remember one time somebody got up gave a word or something I looked at Kevin I said what do you think he goes he didn't break nothing didn't break nothing. Was it a great word? No, I don't know. But guess what? I, my words weren't so great when I started either. God helped me my first time. God helped me to learn to grow. Amen. God helped me learn and grow. Let's stand together tonight. Living God, Spirit of the Living.
I've never prayed in the spirit but I'd like to have my prayer language come up let's pray let's get you activated amen because I believe it's available to everyone we love you we bless you tonight have a great great rest of the week and thank you so much for coming out tonight amen come on up if you need prayer tonight